Hi, I'm Jake. And I'm Marlon. And this is our first Fresh from the Theater review of 2022. And uh, we're going midnight screening style for this in the daylight, but nonetheless. You just got out of uh, seeing the unbearable weight of massive talent starring Nicolas Cage as Nicolas Cage. And... This movie, I know we're a little late to this, it's been about, out about a week, but need to find the right day to see it, and we just did, and it was quite a movie. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this. What'd you think? I thought it was a just as good a farce as I've ever seen. It was great. That is a good word for it. It is definitely a farce. Um, when I heard the concept and saw a few promos for it, Definitely gave, it, it reminded me a little bit of uh, This is the End from 2013, the uh, biblical rapture movie starring Seth Rogen, James Franco, and all of Judd Apatow's boys as themselves. And it's not quite on that level of uh, insanity, but it's definitely a good um, romp. Nicolas Cage plays uh, himself, who's trying to get a... He's well casted. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get a big role that he thinks will uh, be a big uh, career move. And when he doesn't get it, he accepts an offer from some huge rich fan to uh, attend the guy's birthday party for like a million dollars. And it just goes kind of nuts from there. The guy, without giving away too much... The guy appears to be a criminal who the CIA are watching, and when they see Nick Cage come in, they try to get him to help them bust the guy, and there's a lot of, like, the trailer, or the synopsis I read uh, for the movie, made it seem along those lines, but the movie actually had a lot of fun twists and turns along the way. Yeah, for a farce, there was a lot of... Uh of uh, you didn't know really what was going on, it kept you wondering, and, and, but on the other hand, it was hilarious. Nicolas Cage acted, he made wonderful fun of himself. He made, <laughs> they made wonderful fun of making movies in general and picked out a lot of his individual movies to do that with. It is just excellent to watch. The film has a, this is a movie lover's uh, film, uh, the subject of filmmaking, uh, acting, what it means to be an actor, and you see Cage, like, he is really into uh, the job and wants to continue to do more, and he loves film, like, it's not just his own movies, there's a lot of good film talk, classic talk, The Cabinet of Dr. Kalgiri, it's hard to remember how to pronounce that. It's this uh, silent film from like a hundred years ago, and he's really into it, loves talking about it. And a big theme of the movie is Cage, he's divorced. Like, we see a fictional version of his wife, uh, ex wife, and daughter. And he has a hard, a big theme is that he's trying to connect with his daughter, but he's so full of himself and what he loves. He plays, uh, he and his then his his co-star or her his uh, uh, main support uh, it was it Pedro Pascal? Yeah, they were just just wonderful at playing oh, yeah. the the self-involved, uh, pedantic uh, parts of them. Uh, I mean, f uh, features of their own personality, and it was wonderful fun. But as but as Jake said, there's a lot of plot. Changes and change-ups going through it just keeps you going on everything. But the uh, they keep talking about making a movie that is doing this and that, and they're right in the middle of the scene for it doing this and that. It is wonderfully written in that way, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, like there, the guy Pedro Pascal, his character Javi, he's the fan, and he wants to make a movie with Nicolas Cage and. They start brainstorming ideas, and what they're coming up with is basically the, the film itself, its plot, talking about uh, uh, ideas, cliches, 
and where they think it'll go, and it kind of goes there. It just it just keeps happening as they're talking about it, and so they're they're giving. Uh, it's almost like self criticism of of the film industry and the, and the people who develop ideas and uh, how things get on the screen. It's, it's totally just a lot of fun, a great farce. And Pedro Pascal, he's great in this. Uh, his character, like he's not what I thought he would be, but. He and Nicolas Cage, they got great chemistry in this, and you totally buy like this um, kind of uh, out of nowhere, kind of spontaneous relationship, and you, uh, like Pedro Pascal, he's very likable here, a little mysterious, and he, he really grows on you, and um, the other actor, the, the, the other most notable name that was advertised all over the trailers mm -hmm. was Tiffany Haddish. Um, she plays one of the CIA agents who's working with Cage, spying on Pascal. Mm -hmm. And um, um, if there's any, I guess, uh, weak links in the film, I think maybe it's her. Just in the sense that um, she's there and she gets some funny lines, as she you expect her to have. But her character, uh, she didn't leave a strong impact and... Overall, didn't I feel like by the end her character like she's good in the first um, first or second acts, but by the end it feels like it didn't really go anywhere. That's kind of how I felt about her. Yeah, the the uh, they wrote the activity of the character down as the movie progressed, uh, and uh, but I, I didn't feel that way about her. I just felt that the uh, um, the uh, the the, the excuse me, the, the character time, the screen time that she was given in the movie diminished the character. I thought that uh, what, for what she was given, she, she did a, a, a very good job. She did have some good chemistry with Ike Berenholtz, how to pronounce. Mm -hmm. Ike. Um, he plays the other agent. Um, they work well off each other in their few scenes. Like, uh, she sees Cage. She's like, I loved you in Crudes too. My nephew loved it. She asks him, did you see it? And Ike's like, no, I didn't see Cruits 2. I'm 44 years old. <laughs> and, yeah, he like said, they go all through many of Cage's films. The opening scene is um, uh, this character who plays a big part uh, watching a clip from Con Air. And we also get clips from The Rock, which everybody keeps bringing up. And there's a poster for National Treasure, which is a film I grew up with. Um, and uh, mentioned Moonstruck, this other movie I can't remember the exact name of, but it plays a big part in the end of the first act. Pascal says it brought him and his father together, and uh, yeah, just so many, so much twists, turns, and uh, a big, another big thing is, that is pretty cool that like fire trucks. Nicholas Cage, uh, he does give, he's playing himself, but he does give a real performance here. And he has this thing like, he might be a little crazy because there's many scenes where he sees a version of himself, like a slightly younger, very uh, uh, made up version, I guess, of an old character. And he talks to this imaginary friend who's, like, giving him advice on what he should do. Feeding, I guess, his ego. Like, I guess it's a, a physical representation of his own ego. And those scenes, I thought, were some, some of the best. Very hilarious. Because we get him giving the real performance as himself. And then we see him give the classic... Uh, Cage freak out that everybody loves to look out for in this other version of him as he talks to each other. It's it's very hard not to uh, start telling about things in the movies that we'd like you to in the movie we'd like you to see, but uh, so there was there's just a lot of interesting uh, twists and turns. Things keep happening throughout the uh, movie that make the plot actually turn out differently than it seems to be going. And so that's yeah. a lot of fun too. So the, uh, in many ways, it's it's a good movie, 
uh, made about how, how farcical, uh, excuse me, how, how funny and how ridiculous a lot of uh, movie development actually is behind the scenes. I enjoyed it a lot uh, and on many different levels and I really was, I really felt it was wonderful what the, Chris, what the script writer brought to this thing to, to make it evolve the way it did. It was fun. I agree and it's got a pretty cool soundtrack to go with it. Good uh, old time songs and uh, yeah just about everybody in the cast did a pretty solid job. Whoever they have uh, playing his family. Um, Neil Patrick Harris plays his agent. It's a small role but he does it well and uh, there's a uh, last thing I'll say about the film buff stuff. There's a pretty hilarious part where Pascal and Cage chat about uh, Paddington 2 and the payoff it has and is just great and there's a lot of stuff just a lot of dialogue that happens in the beginning that just seems like it's meant for fun and then it comes back later and it comes back in a pretty solid way and I had a blast it was fun if it all depends on just how big of a fan you are of Nicolas Cage. Um, I like him. I don't think he's great in every movie he's ever done, but even when he's not on top completely, it's guaranteed he's always going to be entertaining very much. And entertaining he was. Except for Left Behind 2014. That was dog shit all around. But Nicolas Cage... You, you could edit that. He's, uh... He is, as the film says, Nicholas Fucking Cage. So, it was great. For now, it's a good way to spend an hour and a half. Hour 47, but yeah, it's a good uh, ride all the way through. And um, you can tell whoever the people making behind it, they were all having fun. They took it seriously but not too seriously and they knew to just uh, roll with it have a great time and surprisingly this director has only made one other film and that was almost a decade ago he must have been waiting for a, a good script well i think that's the gist of what we can say without spoiling all the twists and turns that come just uh no it's a uh, self uh, satirical romp it's a comedy it's a friendship tale bit of a spy thriller in there and a family drama it's got a little bit of everything and in the right in the wrong hands it could have uh, been a bit of a clusterfuck but they pulled it off pretty well it, it's pretty solid and that's uh, the gist of what i gotta say do you got anything else i've said what i I meant to say. Okay, this is probably the shortest Fresh Thoughts video just because it's a fun movie. Tiffany Haddish is a little so-so, but it was fun and you got to really experience it all the way through. And I'm glad this was the first movie we went to see in the theater this year and glad you could join me. Well, hope you enjoyed our quick ramblish thoughts and we will see you again hopefully sometime soon. Soon. <laughs>